This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you Episode 38 of Season 2 of the Westford Wardsman Podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, September 18th, 1909. I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford 114 years ago. Uh, The first section uh, is the About Town section. George Russell Smith of Lowell has accepted the position of organist at the Unitarian Church, commencing his duties last Sunday. For a young man in the teens classification or close by, he made good what was expected of him. Mrs. Clara Littlefield of Fitchburg and her daughter, Mrs. Herbert Coffin, and two daughters of Berwick, Maine, also Reverend Seth W. Walker and son of Chelmsford, have been enjoying the rural life of the Walker homestead with its open doors and generous hospitalities. Uh, these Walkers lived on Main Street uh, out, uh, I believe, just to the east of uh, the, the, the cemetery, uh, but across the road from the cemetery. George E. Gould was at the auto race chase last week with spread tent and liberal possession of good things to tempt the hungry. When weary of eating but eager to see nature in some of her freak aspects, he exhibited an animal of the cow kind variety with six legs and three shoulder blades, four legs on one side and two on the other. This cowboy has not yet celebrated his second birthday, is hornless and harmless. Miss Lucinda Prescott of the Stony Brook District is watching rural life in Rockland, way down east, where pine trees are so abundant that the state is named after them. Uh, The state's not exactly named after them, but the pine tree is the state tree. The Committee on the Soldiers' uh, Monument to be presented to the town by Colonel Metcalf, met last week Friday afternoon and laid out the ground for the monument on the triangle opposite the common. Uh, this is the little triangle where the monument stands now on the east side of the, I'm sorry, on the west side of the, of the common. The land was surveyed by Melvin Smith of Lowell, who laid out the grounds, plans for the grading, and lines for the curbing. H.E. Fletcher and Company furnished the curbing from their quarry on Oak Hill. H.W. Tarbell of Lowell will place the foundation for the monument and grade the lot. The committee are amply up to the duty assigned them and will push right along in time, tune, and step with the patriotism of this event. This is a soldier monument to the Civil War soldiers, and uh, we'll be reading uh, more about that in the weeks to come. And that there's quite a dedication ceremony when it is finally dedicated. The center schools opened with 52 scholars at the academy and over 100 at the William E. Frost School. Charged the suddenness of increase up to Stony Brook and and Nabnasset transportation arrangement. Miss Edna Courier of Carlisle has been visiting her grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Wayland F. Balch. Luther Lawton and family, after a few years' absence from town, have returned to their former home on the Dunstable Road on the shores of Longsought Pond. Charles W. Whitney attended the funeral of his brother in Lowell last week. Of the children of his mother's family, only two remain besides, beside his aged mother. The Middlesex North Fair opened Wednesday forenoon at Chelmsford with a busy group of cheery people arranging the display for public exhibition. Everything pointed to sunshine except the sun, and that soon caught on through many openings in the clouds. So far as known, the only exhibitors from Westford were the Neshoba Farm, uh, that was located on uh, Concord Road, and the old Oak and Bucket Farm on Lowell Road. Full account of fair when all returns arrive. Arthur J. Emerson of Chelmsford and William R. Taylor of Westford will play with W. W. Manning and George L. Osgood of Ayer in a lawn tennis contest. The time this Saturday afternoon. The place, Ayer or Westford, corner of Stony Brook Road. 
At time of writing, there is an element of uncertainty as to place. All else is certain as the world measures certainties. This includes as certain that the gentleman from air will have to trim lively and sharp to match the quick and experienced work of the gentleman from Chelmsford. Fair warning, you know. Read it and think it over. Time evolves on its axis so easily and swiftly that you can almost catch the distant sound of these familiar questions. Although 21 future, quote, what is your full name, quote, quote, Roger Haywood Hildreth, quote, quote, where were you born, quote, quote, in Westford, Saturday, September 11th, 1909, end quote. Congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Charles L. Hildreth, baby boy and grandparents. Memory recalls the Youthful School Days Association in the palmy days of the old Stony Brook School with the grandfather on the Democratic side of this ticket. Uh, Roger Hayward, uh, I believe, worked in the right, later in life, uh, worked in the right in Fletcher store and was a um, resident of Westford for most of his life. As per call of the Senate committee, the Republicans will hold a caucus at Town Hall Tuesday evening, September 21st, to choose delegates to the several conventions and choose a town committee to serve one year from next January. There are no contests in sight, and everything is expected to go about right. Our own busy, thrifty townsman, the Honorable Herbert E. Fletcher, is the unopposed candidate for counselor. So there now, go take off your hat at that. These are the days of fair weathers and fairs, and the Congregational Church is going to have theirs Wednesday afternoon, September 22nd. Come, farmer, bring on your crops and see what you can do. George W. Bussey is seriously ill at his home at Brookside. While never rugged, the recent attempt at burning his barn induced a nervous collapse with other complications. Herman Decatur, a former Brookside boy, has sold his milk route in Lowell, which he has been running for several years, and has bought several acres of land near Lowell Poor Farm and intends to raise cream and skim milk. The farmers lost a good milkman. The feed family on the Provident, I'm sorry, the seed family, S E E D, on the Providence Road have left town by free will or other will. The next section is called Death. Sadly but surely, swiftly and permanently, the clouds of life gathered over the home of Mr. and Mrs. Harry L. Nesmith early Friday morning of last week in the death of their two year old son, George W. Nesmith sadder because the only son in the Nesmith family. The funeral took place last Sunday afternoon from the Nesmith home on the Concord Road in the south part of the town and was largely attended. Reverend Benjamin H. Bailey was the officiating clergyman. Sympathy expressed itself liberally with flowers. Uh, There are a number of descendants of uh, this family in town. Pillow Pillow of roses, pinks, and asters inscribed our darling from parents. And then there's a, uh, a, a fairly long list of people who gave flowers for the funeral. Burial was in Fairview Cemetery under the, the direction of David L. Grieg. The next section is the, West, is the Westford Center section. Mr. and Mrs. Charles L. Hildreth are rejoicing over the advent of a son into their home. The little, new, the little newcomer's name is Roger, Hayworth, Roger Haywood Hildreth. Uh, his birth was mentioned above in the uh, About Town section. The John P. Wrights moved Monday to their new home in Lowell, and their genial presence will be much missed in the community. They have made their home here for the past six years. Mrs. Mary J. Fifield, uh, nay Dow, D-O-W, of this village, and her sister, Mrs. Andrew Kelly of Nashua, are enjoying a trip to Nova Scotia with headquarters at Digby. Among the young people going away to school 
are Alistair McDougall, who goes to Massachusetts Agricultural College, and Miss Gertrude Hamlin, who goes to Miss Kimball's Home for Girls at Worcester. Miss May Day returns to Mount Holyoke for her sophomore year. Alistair McDougall uh, lived his whole life in town and was a, a noted uh, historian, among other things. And uh, May Day would return to Westford also and become the town li librarian for many years. Mr. and Mrs. C. Willis Hildreth had a splendid specimen of the rare night-blooming Sirius at their home last Tuesday night. True to its name, it unfolded during the quiet hours of the night, filling the room with its fragrance, and the following day its evanescent beauty had gone. Miss Gertrude Hamlin, previous to her departure for school at Worcester next week, entertained the Enterprise that spelled e, capital E N T E R P R I Z E, the Enterprise Club at her home Tuesday afternoon. The young people had a good time with croquet on the lawn, and later adjourned. Adjournment was made to the house, where refreshments of ice cream and cake were served. The refreshments were the skillful compounding of the young hostess herself and were much enjoyed. The Edward M. Abbott Hose Company had its monthly practice drill Wednesday evening. The attendance was good and hydrants open and tested at the easterly end of the village and all found in good working condition. Afterward, the men returned to the company quarters and had a routine business meeting. Mr. and Mrs. Good Sr. are guests of Mr. and Mrs. Uh, George W. Good at Forge Pond. Reverend Henry Wentworth occupied the pulpit at the Congregational Church Sunday and was present and assisted with the evening service. Mr. Marshall preached at Franklin, New Hampshire. John P. Wright conducted the evening service, a final act of fulfillment to the church he has served so well during his residence in town. The, the next section is called Royally Entertain. The Thimble Club had one of its red-letter days Wednesday when they were entertained at Camp O-Atka. It's spelled capital O hyphen A-T hyphen K-A for the day by, Mrs. by Mr. and Mrs. George W. Good. It was never the same... It was ever the same delightful, good hospitality amid the same pleasant surroundings. The scene at the long dinner table at noon was a merry affair. Nothing was omitted, especially the club blessing. It came out during the meal that it was the host's birthday, and he was the recipient of happy felicitations, although he did not acknowledge a special maturity of years. Ample justice was done to the many good things. Among these were the results of a host's successful angling for an hour or two, and his success with the, with the Finney tribe was an enjoyable addition. Uh, George uh, Good lived on Main Street, 62 Main Street, kind of across from um, uh, Rodenbush, what's now Rodenbush Community Center, and he ran a real REO automobile dealership in Lowell. Later in the afternoon, the members were true to their name and needlework and the spontaneous sociability, sociability of long association together was enjoyed, after which outdoor games until it was necessary to think of going home. Some crossed the pond by boat and came back to the village by trolley, while others drove home. Those members detained from being present for various reasons and much missed were Mrs. H.V. Hildreth, Mrs. Oscar R. Spaulding, Mrs. Edward Fisher, Miss Ruth Fisher, and Mrs. Charles L. Hildreth. The next section is the Graniteville section. What will probably be the last baseball game of the season will be played on the home grounds here this Saturday afternoon, September 18th, when the Graniteville Blues and the Crescents of Lowell will come together for the third game this season. Each club has won a game, and the third contest is bound to be interesting. Game called at 3 p.m. at Hillside Park. John Lorman of this village and Miss Mary Atherton of Lowell were Carnival Week visitors at the house of Mrs. George N. Farrow in Tingsboro. Thomas Denio 
D-E-N-I-O, station agent at the West Graniteville Station on the Nashua and Acton branch of the Boston and Maine Road, is visiting friends in Malone, New York. During his absence, the station will be in charge of W.R. Moore. Miss Margaret Ledwith of this village has recently returned from a very pleasant vacation that was spent with friends in northern New York. Miss Susan Babineau of Lawrence has been a recent guest of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Wall in this village. Mr. and Mrs. Henry Smith are visiting friends in Philadelphia. Miss Catherine Hanley of St. Catherine, of Catherine's Church Choir is now making a tour of the White Mountains and province of Quebec, accompanied by her brother, Edward T. Hanley, of the office staff of the Abbott Worston Company in Ford's Village. They will be absent several days. The A.R. Schott Hose Company held its regular monthly meeting in Healy's Hall on Monday night, and much business of importance was transacted, after which a social hour was enjoyed. D.W. Harrington is on a business trip to northern Vermont. Alfred Prynne has recently returned from a very enjoyable vacation spent with friends in Portland, Maine. All the mills and shops are now running on their regular schedule once more, and the employees have returned to work much refreshed after this brief vacation. A daughter, uh, Telia E.B. Downing was her name, was born to Mr. and Mrs. John Downing of this village on Tuesday, September 14th. Next is the Forge Village section. The ladies' sewing circle met Thursday afternoon at Recreation Hall. Charles Flanagan has returned from camp at North Belgrave, where he has been with friends from the Groton School. Mr. and Mrs. Chester Hartwell are at Treetops, that's in quotes, for the month of September. That must be the name of their cottage. Edward Hanley and sister, Miss Catherine, are visiting points of interest in Canada and Niagara Falls, as just reported in the previous section. Mrs. Buckshorn and little son Fisher and daughter, Miss Elizabeth, are at the Birches, in, which is in quotes, another cottage, for a few days this beautiful autumn weather. That was actually, I, I believe, the name of the Fisher Cottage. And I think it was actually located in the Littleton part of uh, Forge Pond. That's the news in Westford for the week ending September 18th, 1909. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Nick Woodbury of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Westford Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Warsman podcast. Thank you.